So it was recently both Phantom Pen Day and my 24th birthday. And as much as I said I wasn't getting anything, I lasted until the Sunday, which was three days into getting Fountain Pen Day ads and deals and decided that the only purchases I was going to make were to stores that I had credit of some type. So the first one to arrive happens to be from Ferris Wheel Press. I had about $200 saved up in points and I cashed them all in for inks. There were many inks that they've just discontinued in the past couple weeks. I think the rumors about them discontinuing colors started back in August. I think it was at the sidewalk sale when they started. And unfortunately, it seems to be true. They've now got a uh, sort of like goodbyes section on the website. And lots of my favorite colors have ended up in that section, like Madame Mulberry, most frequently Dusk and Bloom, which if you've been counting, <laughs> We're now up to three bottles of, which is, to be fair, the same number of bottles I have of Madame Mulberry, except my Madame Mulberry bottles are all 38 mil. I actually tried to get one more bottle of Madame Mulberry, and I couldn't. It was already sold out. So I've got one more bottle of Dusk and Bloom, which is going to be added to the stash, mostly because it's been in this pen now for over a year straight, and it's still honestly my favorite blue and the only blue I really use. So I want to make sure that I've got enough. And if I get sick of it, well, I get sick of it. It's at least a nice pale blue. The other one that's a double of a bottle that I already own is Unfettered Flight. This is probably one of my top three shimmer colors ever. The other shimmer color I really love from Ferris Wheel Press is... This one, the Riveting Pond, which unfortunately was not in stock. And so Unfettered Flight, which is this very pale blue with a pink shimmer to it. I got another bottle of, they do offer this color in an 85 mil bottle. It just was sold out at the time. And because everything else I was buying was in the clearance slash chance section, I didn't really want to wait to place this order. It felt risky. So I picked that up and then the other not on sale. So this wasn't on sale and this wasn't on sale. I did get a bottle of their black. If you've been following 20 questions, you'll know I think black ink that isn't waterproof is worthless. Uh, I stand by that opinion. I just don't see the point, but a lot of people have been asking me if it's a true black or if it's a gray. And I haven't had it in person to be able to tell anyone. So I did pick up a bottle. I did consider getting one of their new 10 mil bottles, which this is offered in, but I have a hard enough time getting the lids off the old sample vial that they did. As cute as they were, I really struggled to get the lids off them. And I was looking at the lids on their new sample vials and just wasn't sure that I could get the lid off by myself. So I decided to stick with a bottle that I knew I could get the lid off by myself. So. We're not going to swatch Dusk and Bloom or Unfettered Flight. You've seen them a billion times on this page. This is the big surprise. I had done a couple passes of the clearance section. I had sort of built my cart. I was trying to get as close as I could to $200. Um, and I was going through one last time to make sure I didn't miss anything. And all of a sudden, two bottles of buttered popcorn popped up in the clearance section at like 10 p.m. on a Sunday night. And you better believe I put that in my cart and I pressed checkout so fast. Uh, I missed buttered popcorn when it was around the first time. I've heard all the hype about it. I have seen swatches. I have tried it in other people's pens. I've never owned my own bottle. And I am so excited to get to try this ink. Like, honestly, I am so excited to get to try this ink. And like the box design with the little popcorn kernels is so cute. The other colors are Grape Ice Pop, Beaver Dam Brown, Spadina Rose, mostly because Gortzman's is on Spadina, and I have a soft spot for Gortzman's, and I love dusty pinks. Uh, Autumn in Auburn, which I've had a sample of. I liked my sample of it. It's very similar to Monteverde Lion, and I think... 
I really like Monteverde Lion. My issue with Monteverde Lion is that it doesn't always play super nice on my preferred paper because I'm not always using really nice paper. I find Ferris wheel press inks play really nicely on really bad paper. Like if I'm writing on copy paper, Ferris wheel press inks work. So because I don't always use nice paper, I got a bottle of Ottoman Auburn because as much as I love Monteverde Lion, it does need quite nice paper. It likes Tomoe River. It likes stuff like that. And it feathers really badly on cheap paper. So I got a bottle because I like the color, but the bottle that I have that's a similar color currently doesn't play super nice on the paper that I frequently use. And then finally, we have an 85 of Double Raspberry, which is also in my favorite 85 mil bottle container. I love the old packaging. There's just something so nice about it. And I've tried Double Raspberry in other people's pens. I've never had a bottle of it. I've never had a sample of it. But for the price and after looking at swatches, I felt like I couldn't pass it up. So we are going to do the Rolodex swatch cards because they seem like more fun. And it's too hard to edit coloring dipper videos from something like this. So well, let's get into it. All right, first up, the two that I'm not re-swatching. Unfettered Flight is just such a pretty pale blue and also quite legible. Uh, this was just with a dip pen, but I've also had it in mediums. It works better in a broad just because of the glitter in it, but it's super legible as a color, especially as a light blue. It sort of reminds me of Wear and Gall Wendy Darling, except more legible. And then Dusk and Bloom. This is honestly one of the first colors I fell in love with. This and Madame Mulberry have both been permanently inked in pens for months. Madame Mulberry has now been inked in a pen for over 18 months for me. In various pens, Dusk and Bloom has now hit its one year mark. I love this color, which is why I bought another bottle of it. And it's just a very pretty moody blue. So let's get into the new colors. We are going to start with buttered popcorn. I've sort of arranged them by color so that there's no or less of a risk of transfer. Can I get into this box? I can. Excellent. Oh, is that a different piece of art? Or have I never actually looked at the piece of art? No, it's a different piece of art. That's sort of fun. I like the ink bottle and the fountain pens and the paint brushes. Buttered popcorn. I was going, I don't think I've ever seen that piece of art. So I wonder if that's, buttered popcorn's old. Buttered popcorn's from like one of the original collections. I think this ink has been discontinued for like over two years, I want to say at this point, or over a year. Um, so. I'm not a pro at using the Kakamori nib. I have friends that are excellent at it. I would say I am mediocre at best. I'm using the Kakamori nib. I'm not even making contact with the page. Oh, that's a fun color. I do actually quite like that. 
I could definitely see why people were sad when that was discontinued. It is a very orange yellow. Uh, I have freshly squeezed sunshine, which is the yellow they currently have, and it's much more yellow. Whereas this is definitely in the sort of this color world. So like Private Reserve, Buttercup, Wasp. Actually, you're lighter than the Lion. But you're still very pretty. And I do like the old art style on the bottle. All right. Next up, we have Autumn and Auburn. I've never actually paid attention to the art on the various ink bottles. But I guess, like, there would have been an evolution from the Kickstarter bottles to the current bottles. Oh, that's a new bottle. So is it going, like, the current bottles, like, are midway. You need to get better at using a Kakamori nib. There's just a learning curve, and I... <laughs> have not learned how to use one yet. Uh, Autumn and Auburn is part of, do I own the entire fall collection now? Got Algonquin Maple, got Beaver Dam. I might be missing a couple. I think there were six. And I might have four. After that brief intermission, Let's get back to swatching. Uh, maybe this is the one that's Monteverde Lion-ish. Honestly, this doesn't look too far off from Russet Typecase, which I've currently got in a pen. Where's Russet Typecase? Where's Russet Typecase? Oh no. That's Russet Typecase. It's far more orange. That would actually look very good in the Banu Hot Toddy. Maybe it's my color after I'm done with Russet Typecase on it. Because honestly, that would look quite good in the Banu. As colors go. Then we have Spadina Rose. I have a soft spot for Spadina. Smudge on the inside of the box. And a very dusty cap. This has been on the shelf for a while. Alright, I sort of get why they discontinued this color. Uh, this is a new style bottle. I was going to say funny that it got so dusty, but no, there's a hole in the top of the box. I forgot that there was a hole. To say, I love their caps. Their caps make them so easy to uncap. All right, let's see if I've somehow mastered the Kakamori nib in the past five minutes. That's like slightly better. So I think the trick is a lot of ink. Right. Let's 
cap this bottle. I'll say that's always what I'm most worried about is knocking it over before I recap it. All right, double raspberry. I adore the packaging for this. There's a canned goose, all the raspberry canes. It's just, oh, they'll be so stunning. And I love, I love the old 85 mil packaging. Uh, I get, get why the upgrade was made. I assume the new packaging is significantly cheaper. It's just so much easier to open the old packaging. So I do wish, and they still don't do it on the new bottles, that they had the label stickers. Uh, the fairy tales come with labeled stickers on the bottom so you know what color it is. Um, there's a reason why 85s all stay in their boxes and it's so that I know what color is which. Oh, I might actually need mom to open this. I'll be back. All right, we're back. Mom almost couldn't get the lid off either, uh, which <laughs> tells you just how hard that lid was. I find that the 85s tend to have tougher lids at first. Um, oh, that's pretty. How has it taken me this long to get a bottle of it? Oh, I'm so happy that I got an 85 mil bottle of it. I'm so sad that it's been discontinued, but I'm so happy I have 85 mils of this ink. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> it's so pretty. That's a very me ink. Uh, double raspberry, I believe this is called. It is. That's so pretty. Oh, that's absolutely stunning. I feel like I don't have I feel like I don't have a pink like that. Like those are my pinks. I guess no, oh, Sherry Sonata is not right. Like it's sort of in between Diplomat Orchid and Lights on Broadway from Bearsville Press. That's so pretty. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm watching this color palette like grow on my desk and realizing how very me it is. Like it's such a me color palette. Let me get this back in this little bag. I also love that they did matching bags. I don't know that they still do matching bags for the 85 mil inks, and I don't know that they do them for the fairy tales inks, but it's fantastic, and I adore it. So, let's tuck that to the side. Grape Ice Pop is next. I know I love this color. I've got a sample of this color. Uh, actually, I think I've had two samples of this color. I like it so much. I just have never been able to find a bottle of it. It's one of those hard to find bottles. It's also a very old box design. You can definitely see the evolution of the complexity of their box art. But I, there's something about like the simpler box art from the old stuff. Everything you can imagine is real. Like there's just something about the simpler box art that I really like. I wonder if this is gonna be an old style bottle. I think it should be. Nope, it's a new style bottle. It's very pretty. It's also a very purple ink, but it is my favorite purple ink. And I have tried many purple inks to find one that I like. There's just something about this one.
Oh, I love the color. There's just something about a really, really good purple. Like that purple's not too blue, it's not too red, it's just purple. And why is that so hard to find? Like why, why are so many of my purple inks so blue or so red? Why is this ink, why is this lid not on properly? I will say the really nice thing about Ferris Wheel Press ink bottles is that their lids should line up. Like if you look, the lid lines up perfectly. This one isn't lining up, so I'm gonna look at that after. I might just not have it seated correctly. Beaver Dam Brown, again, not really a brown. You'll notice a theme here. More in pinks, purples, and blues with some yellow involved. Oh, that's a different bottle. Oh, I like that. It's so cute. Uh, we've got a little plant. We've got a stack of books. We've got a stack of pens. We've got an hourglass. It is very reminiscent of this one. I believe both of these are part of the same collection. Or, like, from the same year. They're both part of that fall collection. I think it was fall... I want to say fall 2021. I might be totally off there. It might be fall 2022. Uh, but they came out with Algonquin Maple, which is my favorite red, which has also been discontinued. Um, they discontinued like 20 something colors or 30 something. It was actually closer to 30 something colors. I think the total list, including fairy tales, I think Van Ness has it and it's like. I want to say it's 35 colors. So it's quite the impressive list of colors that are disappearing. And there were just some like this that I went, well, I would normally not commit to a bottle this large, but Can we disappear fly? When the cost of a sample vial is the same as, well, I guess not quite the same. Again, I can't get this lid to sit right. I will go back and look at it later. Let's not do that. All right, and finally we have Barrington Black. Now, I'm very excited about this black. I have russet type case and I have lead cast letters, but I did not receive the black in my package. I got, I wanna say I got the new calligraphy ink in my package. I've been wanting to try this and no one's had it in stock. The artwork on this box is stunning and I love how the artwork continues on the flap. Interesting. This is another one of the Beaver Dam Brown bottles. That's fun. Uh, so let's open this up. Just looking at the lid, it looks very green undertoned. Um, it sort of reminds me of like how Rit Dye looks. Rit dye is very green undertoned, and we're actually going to swab this because I want to give it its best shot. Ooh. We're very green. Hmm, 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 hmm. We're going to develop. We might develop. Well, we're sort of changing colors. Interesting. 
right, let's write out your name. Interesting. All right, it's doing what I expect a granulating watercolor to do, where it sort of blooms over time. So what we're actually gonna do is we're going to shake this up really well, because I'm realizing I didn't shake it very well. I didn't actually shake it at all. We're gonna shake this really, really well. And then I'm gonna grab a Muji paper, which is not my favorite paper, but it is going to serve its purpose in this because what we're going to do is a massive swab of this and just sort of see how it develops because I have a feeling that either this is going to be, ooh, do I have my normal black? Can I track down my normal black? I'm going to grab my normal black. All right, I have my normal black. But I've also grabbed Mont Blanc Cool Gray and Mont Blanc Around the World in 80 Days. And that is because Mont Blanc Around the World in 80 Days does the same like blooming color thing where it goes down a different color and then sort of evolves. And I grabbed Cool Gray just to be like sort of a baseline color, honestly. Um, So we're gonna start with Sailor Kirigiro. We're gonna swab all these mostly because the Sailor ink is a pain to get out of a Kakamori nib. Um, it's also a pain to use. I've used so much of this bottle that it's just like. All right, true black. Up and down. And if you, oh, I was going to reference it. I guess it'll be up by now. In the Desert Inkwell, we talked about streakiness with permanent blacks. This is what we were talking about. But you almost never swab about permanent black, so it really doesn't matter. Right, Barrington Black, which I think is going to actually go down very, very green. But is probably going to bloom pretty black. I think it's pretty deceiving. I think it goes down like this pine green. I don't think it'll stay that way. It's already it's already going pretty black. And then so this is Sailor. WP, and then we'll stick Mont Blanc below it. So this is actually Mont Blanc around the world in 80 days. It's not a bro, it's not a black, it's a gray, but it does the same sort of like blooming thing. Where it goes down very green, but it does not dry very green. And I just didn't get enough on my paint brush, on my Q-tip. So I think and then at the very bottom we will put Mont Blanc Cool Gray as our last control. This is a very pale gray. Hmm. Yeah. That's actually a gray. All right. So on the scale of black colors, I would say it's a very dark gray. It's not, it's not a true black like Sailor's is. 
but it is definitely in like this dark gray world there because there's pearl noir and noir bizarre and those are both true blacks that is not bad it is definitely in this like around the world in 80 days world of being a dark gray. Am I upset about it? No. I am personally a fan of those sort of like blacks that go down grays or those those grays that go down green and turn into blacks. I think they're super cool. I think the science behind them is super cool. But if you think you're getting a true black like Sailor, you might be disappointed. Personally, I think it's a lot more fun. There's like a lot more tonal share, tonal variation than you get in a true black. But I can definitely see how somebody would be disappointed if they wanted just a true black. So let's quickly go over all these colors. So there we go. We have Unfettered Flight, Dusk and Bloom, Buttered Popcorn, Autumn and Auburn, Spadina Rose, Double Raspberry, Grace Ice, Grape Ice Pop, Beaver Dam Brown, and Barrington Black. Honestly, it's a very me color palette. <laughs> I'm looking at it and going, none of these colors surprise me. Um, I do really like them all though. And I am actually really happy about Spadina Rose. I've been sort of on the fence about it, but I'm actually quite looking forward to putting in a pen. Same with Double Raspberry and Barrington Black. I am a fan of grays. So now that I know that it's much more of a gray than a black, I'm really looking forward to putting it in a pen. So... Quite excited for the next inks video. I hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, this was quite the ink haul. I've been saving up my points for quite a long time and so it was nice to sort of finally have a way to use them in a way that seemed like a good way to get rid of them and so picking up some inks that I knew I wanted to have in my collection seemed like a good way to use up 200 point, $200 in points. Let me know how you would have used up $200 in points. I did briefly consider another pen, but there are some fun pens coming up on the channel. So I figured some more fun colors of ink for the collection can never be a miss. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed.